Hey everyone, this is Rob from the Retro Gamer. I just got a 1983 service merchandise catalog. It's a spring summer version. And uh, of course, in the 1980s, uh, arguably one of the best uh, 10 years to live in. Uh, great music, a lot of new electronic gadgets were coming out about that time. So um, I'm going to show you uh, the electronic items in here because that's what I really enjoy. The uh, clothing and the jewelry, not really uh, too much on my excitement list here, but uh, I kind of like the bright yellow and wood uh, lawn furniture on the front cover here. So anyways, let's uh, go to the middle here. Uh, I did notice that the jewelry was actually very inexpensive for what you get uh, given that gold and silver have jumped up. I think gold is about $13.50 an ounce right now and silver is around $20 an ounce so you know what you see here these prices nowadays are probably you know three four or five times more expensive now if you were to buy jewelry just because of the spot price of gold and silver so a lot of jewelry in here, some housewares. Uh, I do remember back in the day they actually had real silver sets, uh, sterling silver. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of people probably wouldn't buy that stuff now just because of the expense that would be incurred by making the uh, jewelry out of silver. So, anyways, here are the uh, here's the beginning of the electronic section. Uh, back in the 80s, 90s, calculators were uh, quite a big thing. Uh, you'd use them for school, obviously. Um, you know, nowadays, obviously, they still have uh, scientific calculators. But back then, they were pretty expensive. Usually, you know, $50 to $150 uh, would be a range on a scientific calculator. I believe you can still get them. Uh, for that high now, but you can get some lower price ones for you know 20 30 bucks now, so that's a uh, Cost of those electronics came down here some regular I believe what you call SLR cameras uh, They actually used real film that they're not digital cameras. They had no digital cameras I'd probably say uh, early 90s when is when digital cameras came out uh, here is a Kodak disc camera. One of my friends had that. It actually used a unique disc film-based uh, cartridge you'd put in, and I can't remember how many pictures you'd get on it, but it was pretty cool. A very compact camera for the for the age. Uh, they still had some Polaroid cameras back in the day. Slide projectors. When you had invited your family over, you could bore them to death with the. Uh, slides of your family vacations. Here's a Commodore VIC-20, I believe, up here, about $150. That was the predecessor to the uh, Commodore 64, not quite as powerful. Still looked uh, about the same, actually. Uh, here's an Intellivision 2 down here in the bottom. Most of your games ranged about $40, it looked like. Uh, the Atari 800 up here, and then the Atari 400. Uh, the Atari 400 actually had a membrane type keyboard, uh, very difficult to type on and the failure rates on those were actually extremely high. Uh, I've got one upstairs and most of the keys don't work on it. And then the Atari 800, uh, better keyboard, actually it's a pretty well built computer. Uh, big quite price difference though, $200 compared to $5. Uh, and I would say for home computer computers back in that time, $500 was kind of on the high end. Uh, two to 300 is more in the norm, so you don't see as many 800s as you do like the 400s or the Commodore uh, VIC-20s or the Commodore 64. So here are some cordless phones. Those are very popular in a day. A lot of times your antennas would extend out there, metal antennas, and they would break, so you'd have to Go to like Radio Shack and spend you know five ten bucks to replace the uh, metal antennas. Separate answer machines had cassette players built in to record and play the message. You'd actually have one tape that would record, or I'm sorry, play the message, and then the other tape for recording the message. Uh, later on, <clears throat> excuse me, you'd have a digital outbound recording. Uh, 
I'm sorry, the outgoing message would be digital in, in the later generations, and then you'd still have like a, they call it usually a micro or mini cassette to record the messages. And nowadays, if uh, you even have a voicemail or answer machine, I should say, uh, it's pretty much all digital now. So as time went on, they went from tapes to partial digital and then all digital. Uh, you've got some little mini boom boxes here, alarm clocks, uh, all-in-one Craig cassette, AM, FM radio, clock radio, sound design. Uh, Craig and sound design were probably one of the more two popular uh, brands back in the day for the lower priced uh, units. Okay, and then we have our full-size boom boxes here. Those would range anywhere from about a hundred bucks to a couple hundred dollars back in the day. You basically had an AM, FM radio and cassette player. No CD players were uh, out at this point in uh, 83. And then we had the Walkman generation. Again, primarily cassette players. Sometimes you did get AM, FM radios, but mostly uh, cassette players at that point. And then you also had uh, separate AM, FM radios down here in the bottom. Uh, this, I believe, was one of the first Sony Walkmans, and that was a cassette player. Uh, mostly made out of metal, so very well built. And on the next page here, we've got some more sound design, all-in-one units. Uh, Panasonic, Panasonic. And then over on this side, we have the component, uh, Techniques. That was one of my favorite brands. Uh, I had a Techniques cassette player, Techniques turntable. Um, here's an Akai uh, receiver, another higher-end brand at, at, during those days. Panasonic, Panasonic all-in-one uh, stereo. You got the speakers. Everything was one unit, and the case usually was also included. That puppy ran about 500 bucks. Uh, you get things like that at Radio Shack also at that point. Uh, here's some turntables. Again, techniques. Here's a linear tracking, so you didn't have a pivot arm. The arm actually went left to right on a, uh, it's like a slide post in the back here. That was usually sold uh, as better uh, performance. I usually saw when we sold the linear tracking turntables at Radio Shack, the failure rate was just higher. So uh, if you do see a linear tracking, they're neat, but if you want a turntable, just get the standard one. I usually recommend uh, go direct drive, don't get the belt drive as uh, over time the belts will break and then trying to fix them is more complicated. Here are some of your cassette decks, again Techniques, Akai. I'm not sure if Akai actually makes anything anymore. Techniques, uh, I believe, bought out Panasonic if I'm not mistaken or vice versa. TAC, that's another brand. Here are your tube TVs, Sony, Emerson. Emerson was another big brand. Kind of a lower end brand in the day. Here is a uh, Panasonic, that's a uh, VHS player. I thought it was a beta, but they uh, must have gotten rid of those by this generation. But that's an old looking VHS, so I'm guessing that's probably about, and the remote is wired, so, pro and $427 for a VHS player, so more than likely. Uh, one of the first generation VHS players, so probably the betas were being phased out at that point. And then we've got a couple radar detectors, Bearcat scanners, police scanner, fire scanner, uh, emergency uh, CB radio, Citizens Band is what the CB stands for. Basically, I believe it was a 40 channel radio. You could hear truckers and communicate with each other. Uh, the range. I think maybe up to five miles, not very long. That was with a good antenna too. Uh, here are some in-dash cassette players for your car. You could upgrade the old AM, AM radio only or AM FM radio. Uh, Sanyo brand, Jensen was popular, AudioVox, uh, Craig, again, Craco. Craco was kind of a cheaper brand. Here's some speakers down here at the bottom. Six by nines were the big thing back in the day. <laughs> and I think that's about it. Um, like I said, the, uh, the the other products in here, you know, the bicycles kind of look old school. But the, when I had the Sears catalog, it definitely seemed like there was a big generation gap between the 70s 
and then when we got into the 80s you know looking at stuff from the 80s until now they don't look quite as uh, extreme as far as the differences but uh, definitely from this even the 70s to the 80s there was a big difference in the way the products looked, the clothing and everything um, so I, that's one thing I did notice about the uh, items the differences between the 70s and the 80s uh, it just seemed like you know you look at the coolers nothing's really changed a whole lot you know the color schemes have but uh, backpacks I mean it's just you know fishing rods I guess uh, you know, there's not been a lot of change in this type of stuff again I'd say mostly color type changes maybe quality uh, here's some lawn mowers weed eaters some grills again nothing really looks much different from what we have now so anyways uh, there's some watches Casio awesome watches back in the day um, I'm gonna show you just for kicks here we talked about gold and silver to begin with uh, I just picked up some sunshine one ounce uh, silver coins I got ten of them um, I am stacking silver because uh, I believe at some point that the U.S. dollar will probably, uh, I think we're actually in the process of it, I think it's going to lose its reserve currency, and I, I believe that things in a bank account and uh, your retirement accounts, I think that's going to be an issue at some point. I, I, I really believe that uh, countries like China are, uh, they're actually building their own gold exchanges. Uh, there's a uh, the BRICS nations have uh, built their own uh, banking infrastructure to replace, I believe, what will take over <laughs> our own uh, system. So, you know, if if you guys out there actually are concerned about the dollar or just the economy in general um, and the banking system, uh, I believe that gold and silver are a way of uh, preserving your. Uh, purchasing power because if something does happen to the dollar as a reserve currency what that means is that you know we as a country can print money other countries have to produce goods to buy and sell to buy the dollar as a reserve currency we have a luxury as the uh, having the dollar as a reserve currency but if that ever goes away then that means that the new reserve currency is going to be the strong currency and then the dollar is just going to be it's almost going to be like a flip-flop right so the country that has it which i kind of lean towards china possibly uh, they will probably have the purchasing power or the the ability to just print their own currency like we are right now and we won't have that because the trust in the dollar is going to go away so uh but anyways that's my idea i you know in my 100% on target with this. I don't know, but there's a good chance that it could happen. We're starting to see China unload the uh, U.S. Treasuries. They're selling those off. Uh, a lot of countries around the world are selling off the Treasuries, which means that there's a reason why that's happening. So, anyways, I'd recommend uh, these again. One ounce silver. Uh, go one ounce gold coins are so expensive right now. I do have a few, but uh, silver is inexpensive. And it's also used in uh, like solar panels and electronic cell phones. So I, I believe that silver is a very undervalued uh, precious metal. Uh, normally the out of ground ratio is about, uh, I think, one ounce of gold for every roughly 10 ounces of silver. And right now the ratio is one ounce of gold for like every 70 ounces. I believe that's because of uh, man manipulation of the price of silver. Uh, some of the banks over in Europe have actually admitted to the manipulation prices of precious metals so if that's the case I believe that silver is going to be the winner uh, if something does happen and if nothing else happens to the currency and everything stays hunky-dory then you know what just go and sell your silver and get your cash back you know it's not a big deal but it's a good hedge against uh, uh, hyperinflation so just wanted to show you those uh, these are sunshine silver you can usually pick them up on ebay uh, don't buy them from a party unless it's like atmex or jm boyan or a couple of the well-known just don't buy them from personal people because there are a lot of fakes out there and uh you don't want to spend your money on an investment that isn't real because there are some definite fakes so 
Anyways, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like it, thumbs up, and please subscribe to the channel. Take care.